welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes so i do know that i had been mia on youtube and you all missed me and my videos a lot and so did i miss you all and shooting for my videos so i promise to you that i'll be regular now onwards so the topic for today's video is inflation and theories of inflation so in this particular video i'll be talking about inflation the introduction to inflation uh, the causes of inflation and i'll be talking about the two theories the demand pull and the cost push theory so yeah let's get started so coming to the definition of inflation so what exactly is inflation inflation is a persistent and considerable rise in the general price level over a period of time so make sure you use these terms when you are talking about inflation persistent because it has to be for a continuous period considerable because you know one or two percentage ka rise we can't call it as inflation it has to be considerable in the general price level that is you know if one or two uh, commodities ka price rise we can't can't call it inflation it has to be like for a lot of commodities and of course over a period of time so coming to the characteristics continuous and persistent which we already studied monetary phenomena because it deals with money where the value of money is falling and lastly it occurs during the recovery or boom period of a business cycle so guys further coming to the causes of inflation so you know there were many economists the classical keynesian and monetarists and all had their own point of view as to why inflation occurs and obviously they all you know differed in the point of views so then we classified it into two sides you know the causes can be because of two reasons one are the demand side factors and the other are the supply side factors so firstly i'll be explaining you the demand side factors why because of increase in demand uh, you know the inflation occurs and why does the demand increase we will study now so increase in money supply if there is more money in the economy people have more demand you know more purchasing power reduction of taxes their real income is rising due to which they can demand more increase in demand for exports are exports are demanded more due to which the demand is increasing overall increase in population more number of people more demand and increase in income and wages so obviously when we are earning more we demand more and of course pushing up the prices so these factors demand side factors they lead to further the dpi which is the demand pull inflation uh, make sure you don't confuse it confuse between pull and push which students often tend to next coming to the supply side factor so these occur if you think from the point of view of a producer or a supplier so maybe what happens there is increase in price of raw materials so when the raw materials ka price they rise so obviously the product becomes more expensive pushing the price of the product increase in price of other inputs maybe not raw materials maybe something else which is used government policies here we said taxes are reduced maybe when government you know puts a lot of taxes so in that case government policy ka change hone se you know supply side factors we will have this and next power shortages and maybe increase in rate of interest which ultimately lead to the cost push inflation so these are basically the two theories which we'll be studying ahead so coming now to dpi which is the demand pull inflation and i'll be explaining this in thorough details so now what is dpi why does it occur when does it occur basically so it is a situation where our demand is more than the supply that is demand is rising but supply is not being able to match the demand due to which the prices rises so basically this was told by keynes he had told that this occurs um, essentially in the case of full employment so i'll just give you an example with the help of which you can be you know clear with this type of inflation so basically we are demanding some good and the producer is supplying right but after some point of time all those people who are willing to get employed are fully employed there are no more you know employment opportunities so when you tend to demand more of that good there is no one who can produce the good right so our demand is rising but basically we cannot match it with the supply and what happens then it essentially pushes up the price so let me show you the diagram so this is a diagram where we have output on the x axis and we have price on the y axis os is our uh, you know supply curve and ad these blue lines are our aggregate demand curves so we see essentially our aggregate supply curve is you know how it's supposed to be it's increasing and we have our aggregate demand curve and they intersect at point e1 which is the equilibrium level at this point we notice that we have reached qf qf is the full level of employment after this the employment cannot be increased okay so now what happens due to increase in population or i just explained you the causes right maybe due to increase in any other thing um demand uh, what happens is demand goes ahead to ad2 
and now our supply cannot increase you see our supply curve has become straight and parallel to the y axis it is constant and now only thing which can occur is the price rise now price has been pushed from p1 to p2 when we are at this level now due to some other reason or other causes you know we see our aggregate demand curve is further pushed to ad3 now from ad2 we reach to ad3 again you know we cannot increase the supply supply is constant because we are at qf full level of employment again what happens the price increases and from p1 we see we come to p2 and essentially to p3 which is what dpi or demand pull inflation is so now moving ahead to cost push inflation which is the supply side inflation we've already done dpi which is demand side now which is cpi is the supply side okay so this occurs essentially when there is a rise in cost of production cost of production plays a very important role under cpi now what is cost of production made up of it is made up of wages interest depreciation rent input cost taxes and few other things but basically while studying this theory we noticed and we study that you know total cost mein wages they play a very important role wages you know comprise of a ch chunk of the total cost and that is the reason this theory cpi is sometimes also known as wage push theory because wages ke badhne se hi you know uh, cost of production badhti hai due to which cpi badh hoti hai so sometimes you know uh, an economy is also stuck in a wage price spiral what is that exactly um, when what happens is wages jab badhti hain to obviously prices badh jate hain because you know it becomes more expensive to produce that good and overall prices badh jate hain now what happens now the laborers say are abhi economy mein prices badh rahe hain so give us more wages so wages again badhti again prices so you know economy is kind of stuck in that uh, vicious circle so that was about the wage price spiral added info which i gave you now coming to the diagram of cpi so this is a diagram uh, something similar to what we did for dpi output is on the x axis whereas price on the y axis and we notice here we have as um, sas sorry as our supply curve and ad as our aggregate demand curve right so our first supply curve and aggregate demand curve they intersect at point e which is our equilibrium point something similar to what dpi was and we have reached our full level of employment now we are at qf now what happens is now already we have reached full level of employment and it is difficult to produce at this particular price and you know supply badhti hai now because supply increases due to the causes i've already explained due to rise in raw materials ka price rise or other factors our supply curve shifts from sas to s dash as you know we've come from this line to the above line this line now we've come up okay so now we notice the sas has increased okay it has shifted upwards but in this case we also notice that our aggregate demand curve also shifts from ad to ad1 both of them increased now what has happened initially our price was p when you know ad and sas were intersecting at point e but now we notice because of increase in both these aggregate demand and aggregate supply our price has been pushed up from p to p1 and we are at a new equilibrium point which we can call it as e1 so this is basically about cpi or cost push inflation and um, in in real life i would say that you know cpi and dpi we study in economics theoretically that they are both different theories but in an economy uh, both of them just operate simultaneously we can't say why inflation is occurring it is because of cpi or dpi only there's you know they work uh, simultaneously as you can say and these theories can be controlled by uh, monetary and fiscal measures so definitely i can come up with a video of uh, you know ways to control that and inflationary and deflationary gap very soon uh, so that's all about today's video and also if you want to know about monetary and fiscal measures before i come up with that video do watch about monetary and fiscal fiscal policy because that you need to know before i teach you this i'll attach the link in the comment section below i've already made videos on that so thank you so much for watching i hope this video was useful for you and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video pretty soon